A responsible dog owner never walks their pooch on hot concrete. Your feet are protected by shoes, but for dogs' paws, roads and sidewalks can feel scorching. When it's hot outside, avoid these harmful surfaces. Stick to grassy areas. Your first instinct might be to shave your dog in the summer. Being covered with all that hair must feel like wearing a fur coat. What lots of people don't know is that dog's fur shields their skin from sunlight. Without this protection, your pooch can get sunburns. Your pooch will be grateful if you stop taking it for the same boring walk every day. Dogs are curious, and they love learning new things and exploring. Mix it up, take different routes, go to new places. This will make your pup's life more exciting. Showering your dog with affection after it misbehaved is a sure way to make the animal confused. It needs to learn right from wrong, and it's impossible if you start to snuggle or stroke your pet too soon after telling it off. You have to be firm, otherwise the dog will never learn the rules. A responsible dog owner will never neglect its pooch's teeth. Statistically, 5 out of 6 people don't think brushing their pet's teeth is necessary. That's why more than 65% of dogs have dental problems that go untreated. There's probably no dog that enjoys the process of teeth brushing, and it does take tons of your time. But try doing it at least three times a week, and your fluffy friend will be much healthier. Don't allow your dog to run while holding a stick in its mouth. Most dogs love playing fetch and then trotting around with branches in their teeth. But vets know all too well that such games can end badly. One end of the stick gets stuck in the ground, and the excited dog fails to notice the other end jutting into the air. It's much safer to throw rubber balls or toys. Trimming their dog's nails is something a good owner will never forget to do. Dogs do wear their nails down on hard surfaces while walking outside. But if your pooch spends most of its time at home, its nails have to be clipped just like you. If they aren't, your dog can accidentally scratch itself. Long nails also make walking more difficult. Don't let your pet chew up its toys. Dogs have strong teeth, and it won't be a problem for your pup to bite off pieces of rubber or plastic. If the animal swallows one of them, wow, it can block the digestive tract. Better give your pooch a special chew treat. A good dog owner knows when they have to be firm. Pups can be incredibly cute, but it's not the reason to let it run wild and rule the house. Dogs do need structure. Don't hesitate to be strict when necessary, but doing it in a way without hurting the dog or making it fear you. You have to show your pet who's boss around here. Overfeeding their pooch isn't something a responsible dog owner would do. Yep, even when it's giving you its best puppy eyes look. Some dogs don't have the stop mechanism for eating. You need to figure out how many calories your pet consumes versus how much exercise it gets. Don't leave your pup outside when it's cold. Yep, dogs do have the protection of their fur. But if the weather is too chilly for you, it's likely to be too cold for your pet too. A good owner knows dogs don't like to be petted or even touched from above on top of their heads. This way, they can't see your hand, and an unexpected movement can frighten them. Try to pet your pooch from an angle where they can predict what you're about to do. Plenty of exercise is great for dogs, but don't overdo it. Your pooch might love to play, but it can easily get overheated. Make the animal rest for some time, even if you see your dogs having fun. A responsible dog owner will pet-proof their bathroom before adopting a puppy. Most bathrooms have cleaning chemicals or toiletries that can be toxic to pooches. Oh, and if you have a large dog, always keep the toilet lid down. The water inside is a far cry from being clean. Sharing your meals with your pooch may seem like an okay thing to do, but there's a reason why specialized dog food exists. It has all the nutrients your pet needs. The food you eat, on the other hand, may have some ingredients that are poisonous to pooches, like raisins, grapes, garlic, or yeast. Oh, and chocolate is super harmful to dogs. Your dog needs sunscreen on a sunny day as much as you do. Without this protection, your pooch can get sunburned. Of course, hairless dog breeds are more at risk than fluffy ones. The same goes for pups with thin or white coats and those with light pigmented eyelids and noses. 
But never put the sunscreen you use on your dog. It can harm your pet. Buy a special dog sunscreen at a pet store. Don't forget to groom your pup. Even if it has short hair, a trim might be needed every now and then. Dogs also need to have a bath regularly. A good dog owner will never ever put their pet in a truck bed. It might seem like a comfortable and good place for the animal, but the dog can jump out. It can get thrown out of the vehicle at a sharp turn or bump in the road. Or it can get hurt when the truck suddenly breaks. You can look, but don't stare. If you maintain eye contact for too long, your dog might think you're challenging it. Feeding your pup apple cores is a big no-no. Apple seeds contain cyanide. In large amounts, they will be poisonous for the dog. Apple slices, though? Hmm, <laughs> perfectly fine. Don't just assume your dog would get along with a cat. They might not behave unfriendly toward each other at first, but it doesn't mean one of them won't hurt the other when you're not around. Keep an eye on the animals until you make sure they get on very well. Like my dog and cat, they're best buds. Dogs need a lot of water, especially on hot days or after vigorous activities. Make sure your pooch always gets enough fresh water, otherwise it can have a heat stroke or get dehydrated. A good dog owner will never leave their dog in a car. The weather might seem cool and nice, but once the sun is out, the insides of the car get heated within minutes. Dogs don't have that many sweat glands, that's why they feel the heat more than us humans. Never let your dog pull you when you're outside. You're the one to leave, not the other way around. It helps your pooch to realize who's in charge. Plus, it makes your walks so much easier. When the weather is getting hot and stuffy, some dog owners add ice cubes to their pet's water bowls. Or a pooch might be given a cube to play with. But dogs shouldn't be allowed to chomp on ice. They can easily break their teeth, especially the big ones toward the back of their mouth. It's safer to use cold water or dog-friendly frozen veggies, like sweet potatoes or carrots. Ignoring your pooch is a sure way to make it unhappy. Dogs love attention and hate being left on their own. You might have noticed that your dog gets a bit restless and distressed when you're busy. Don't forget to spend some quality time with your fluffy friend afterward. Try to be on the watch whenever kids are playing with your dog. Little ones often don't realize they aren't being gentle enough. A responsible dog owner won't give up until they get the right collar for their pet. It shouldn't be too tight or too big. Find one that's comfortable enough for your pooch to wear all day long. And keep in mind that choker collars make some dogs anxious. Checking for ticks is one of the most important things a dog owner should do. Even indoor dogs can get these bugs. Remove all the ticks you spot. Not only are they uncomfortable, but they're also likely to make your pooch sick. Don't let your dog run loose, even if it's just in the neighborhood. The pooch can get lost or stolen, or it might come across a stray dog or a car. A fence yard is a much better place for roaming. A responsible dog owner always makes sure candies, chewing gum, and toothpaste are kept away from their pooch. All these products contain xylitol, a common sweetener. But once it gets swallowed by a dog, the animal's body starts to produce insulin, and that can end badly. If you love dogs, you might want to pay attention here. <laughs> 12 harmful things you do to your dog without realizing it. Hey, if you're a dog owner, you surely want your pooch to be healthy and to live a long and happy life. But you might sometimes do things that can potentially harm your canine companion without even realizing it. Dogs are curious, adventurous, and childlike. It's a beautiful thing, but it can also get them into trouble. We don't want that, of course, so here are some common mistakes people unintentionally make when it comes to taking care of their doggies. Now, before we dive into this pool of knowledge, remember to hit that subscribe button. This way, you'll get access to all the cool, useful videos that appear daily on the Bright Side of Life. Counting down from number 12. Choosing the wrong collar. First and foremost, you need to choose the right kind of collar. This decision is very important, and it's also quite personal. 
There are several types of collars, and you need to pick the one that best suits the needs and character of your pup, as well as a place to attach his license. A flat collar. This is the most widespread type, and you can find them at any pet store. It comes with a buckle so that you can change the length of the collar to your liking and as your pup grows. A breakaway collar. This type was created mostly for dogs that spend a lot of time outside. It comes undone once there's a threat of a choking hazard, like with fences or branches. If your dog is an inquisitive pup with the soul of an explorer, this collar will be perfect for them. Special collars for dog training. You might not want to use these sorts of collars if you have a very young puppy, since they're mostly designed for behavioral training. In any case, everything depends on your pet's age. A harness. If your dog is a puller or likes to explore as far as it can reach, adding a harness might be a better option for your furry friend. Collars can seriously injure your pet's throat if it pulls too hard on its leash. But that's not a problem with pulling on a harness. So whether you've settled on a harness or gone for a collar, the second and just as important step is making sure it's the right size. If a collar or harness is too big, your pooch might escape. Yet, if it's too small, it can choke him. The general rule is that for small and medium-sized breeds, you should be able to slip one finger between the collar or harness and the dog's neck. For large and extra-large dogs, two fingers should fit. And don't forget to check the tightness every once in a while, especially while your pup is still growing. Plus, dogs, just like people, can put on weight over time. Hey, don't remind me. Number 11. Leaving a dog alone in the car. Never, ever leave your dog alone in the car. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the temperature inside a car can increase by 20 degrees in just 10 minutes, even if the car is parked in the shade. The National Highway Traffic Safety Association confirms this data and adds that even if the temperature outside is a pleasantly cool 60 degrees Fahrenheit, it can skyrocket up to 110 degrees inside a car. Dogs don't sweat like people do, and they can overheat much faster than you'd think. And since they lack this crucial ability to cool themselves off, the consequences of staying in a parked car can turn out fatal. Signs of overheating include drooling and panting excessively and looking overall agitated. Symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, or lethargy indicate a life-threatening emergency. In this case, the dog needs to see a vet immediately. Number 10. Neglecting your dog's teeth. You know, a dog's teeth need to be cleaned just like people's teeth do. And it's not an issue of aesthetics here, it's a necessity. That's why you should start doing it as soon as you get your pup, so that they get used to having their teeth brushed. Three times a week is okay in the beginning, or if your dog's teeth are healthy. But working up to doing it daily is best. And no, giving your canine some chew stick treats can't replace regular brushing. Those minty chews don't clean the back teeth as well as a toothbrush can. Don't use toothpaste and toothbrushes designed for people. There are special ones made just for dogs, and they're pretty different from the human kinds. You've probably never tried any chicken or beef-flavored toothpaste, right? Canine toothbrushes usually have smaller heads and really soft bristles. If you don't have one, you can use a kid's toothbrush, a cotton swab, or even a piece of gauze wrapped around your finger. But still, you can easily get a doggy toothbrush and toothpaste from your local pet store or from your vet. Speaking of which, you need to have your pet's teeth professionally cleaned at the vet twice a year. Yep, just like people. Now, here's my secret bonus tip. If you can get your dog hooked on gnawing on special plastic bones, you get the best of both worlds. This activity satisfies his need to chew, keeps him busy while discouraging destructive chomping, and cleans your doggy's teeth automatically. My 9-year-old pal Riley has never needed professional cleaning due to this fun chewing habit he started as a puppy. His vet is astonished at his pearly whites at every checkup, to my great joy, and I save a lot of money that way. Number 9. 
Letting your dog eat everything. You should never feed human food to your dog. It's way too salty, too spicy, and too fatty for them. In fact, most dishes you eat are severely toxic for them. Take candy, chewing gum, baked goods, and even some diet foods. They contain a special sweetener called xylitol. If your dog ingests it, their blood sugar may drop, and this can lead to liver failure. Avocados, in turn, contain persin. This toxic can cause severe vomiting and diarrhea in your pooch. Well, not to be Captain Obvious here, but never give your dog alcohol. It affects a canine's liver and brain much more easily than it does a human's. Alcohol in a dog system can lead to diarrhea, vomiting, troubles with breathing and coordination, and in the worst cases, coma and death. The full list of products that can cause serious problems in your pet's health is miles long. Still, some of the main ones include coffee, tea, and other caffeinated drinks, grapes and raisins, milk and other dairy products, fatty bones and trimmings, peaches, plums, and persimmons. Hey, they all start with P. Raw eggs, milk, and fish, salty and sugary foods, and, of course, the infamous chocolate. You also shouldn't give your dog any table scraps while you're having a meal. This teaches undesirable begging habits. Oh, please, can I have some more? <laughs> and dogs are, in fact, incredibly quick learners when it comes to things they're not allowed to do. Number 8. Bringing puppies to a dog park. Dogs are very social, but think twice before taking a small puppy to a dog park. To begin with, dogs can sometimes be passive carriers of diseases. Secondly, grown-up dogs, especially large ones, can be incredibly rough when playing and running around. They may inadvertently scare or even accidentally hurt your little pup. Number 7. Using physical punishment Yes, dogs do need training. Their owners need it even more. But physical punishment is never okay. First of all, it's just outright animal abuse. Plus, it doesn't work and actually does the opposite of what you want. It makes your dog scared of you. Reward-based training is much more effective than physical discipline, and here's why. While reward-based training helps build trust between a dog and his human, Physical punishment breeds distrust of humans in general. Reward-based training encourages a dog to behave in a desired way. But when a dog is physically punished, it may try to hide, start urinating uncontrollably, and freeze in submission because it's scared to death. Reward-based training helps a dog learn and perform a desired behavior. However, when an owner uses physical punishment, a dog can concentrate only on one thought. This hurts, and I don't like it. Think about it. Do you like getting hit? Didn't think so. You like rewards? Duh. See? Dogs are no different than you. So, if your dog does things you'd prefer he didn't, sign them up for obedience school, which is as much for teaching you as it is for the dog. The very best time to do this is when they are puppies, when the concrete hasn't hardened yet, and you can more easily install positive habits and behaviors. Number 6. Providing too little stimulation Just like you, dogs need constant mental and physical stimulation, especially working breeds, which is why regular walking is a must. If you're thinking about getting a dog, consider whether or not you'll be able to provide this necessity. Walks not only provide dogs with much-needed exercise, they expose your pup to different sounds and smells. This sensory stimulation, in turn, makes their brain work better. If dogs don't get enough stimulation, they'll simply try to entertain themselves. This, unfortunately for owners, usually comes in the form of digging, chewing, or tearing things up. Number 5. Not securing your dog in the car People use seatbelts, kids use car seats, so why would the case be any different for your dog? If you don't secure your dog in the car and you end up in an accident, your pet can get seriously injured or even killed. You've got tons of options when it comes to canine car safety. There are harness seat belts, zipline harnesses, different types of carriers, and doggy ejection seats. Woohoo! <laughs> Just kidding. Just find the one that suits your needs. Number 4. Yelling when your dog does something wrong. 
Yelling is another thing you should never consider when disciplining a dog. Just like physical punishment, it doesn't work. They don't understand no, so it only freaks your dog out, especially when you're ticked off about something that happened a while ago. In this case, your dog won't only be scared, it'll be confused too. Number 3. Skipping Flea Tick and Worming Treatment Preventative treatment against parasites is crucial when you're a dog owner. Some people say you can take a break from flea tick and heartworm medicine in winter if you live in a cold climate. But you really should discuss it with your veterinarian. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Number 2. Leaving harmful objects around Well, dogs are adventurous and this gets them into all sorts of trouble. Dog-proof your house by putting away anything your pet can chew or swallow. Things like medications, screws and nails, magnets, coins and batteries should never be within your pet's reach. Socks seem to be every dog's favorite pulling toy. But keep in mind that if a pooch swallows one, it can get stuck in their throat. Number 1. Neglecting breed-specific health issues Now, some breeds require specific grooming or have a predisposition to certain health issues. Always do your research before you get a pet so that you'll know how to best take care of it and what problems to look out for. So, if you're a dog owner or simply a dog lover, then give this video a like and share it with all the dog people you know. And if you have some more pet care recommendations, tell us what we've missed in the comments below. Okay, pet owners, you can always tell when your dog is happy, right? Wagging tails and excited, playful barking speak for themselves. But it's not so easy to tell why your pooch is sad or even depressed. Let's try to figure out the most common reasons your fluffy friend might be upset. Starting with number 12. You haven't set a daily routine and rules for your dog. Your dog has its own biological clock, which is why a routine is so important. Dogs want, and even need, rules to follow. Consistency makes the world predictable to them, so they become more confident and less stressed. Try to feed, walk, and train your dog at the same time every day. Having a daily routine doesn't mean avoiding fun altogether. Dr. Deborah Promovic recommends that you include quality time with your pet within that fixed routine. It can be something basic, like sitting next to each other and watching TV. Every so often, you can let the dog pick the shows to watch together. Just a few days after you've started practicing a daily routine, you'll notice that your dog has become happier. Number 11. You like to dress up your dog. If you haven't trained your dog to wear clothing since it was a puppy, you'll find it difficult to dress it at an older age. It's okay to put a sweater or a coat on your dog during walks if you have a toy breed or a breed with short hair. Your best bet is a blend of washable wool and cotton or acrylic. However, if you have a Siberian Husky, Malamute, or some breed with a dense coat, you don't need to bother with a sweater. And hats and costumes are uncomfortable for any breed. And they just look dumb. The opinions of the narrator are not necessarily the opinions of Brightside Management, and we are not responsible for any bad jokes either. Number 10. You use words more than body language. In 2018, a group of veterinarians at the University of Barrie did a comprehensive study on communication in dogs. They don't deny that in over 30,000 years of living with humans, dogs have gained certain communication skills to understand their owners. They've mastered basic commands such as walk, treat, toy, and the like, but still, they don't speak the human language. They rely on your body language to try to figure out how you feel or what you think. When you do confusing things, such as tell your pup to stay and lean toward it stretching your hand forward, it gets upset because it doesn't know if you really want it to stay or come closer. So try communicating more with your body when talking to your pet instead of trying to chat with it. Number 9. You tease your pet. Have you ever barked back at a barking dog? Yeah. Or maybe pulled on a dog's tail? Nah. Or better yet, you show a treat to a dog and then hide it or eat it yourself, if it's not dog food, of course. Mmm, guilty. Remember this, 
what's funny for a human can be hurtful and offensive for an animal. According to the Whole Dog Journal, teasing your pet won't help mutual understanding and can cause an obsessive-compulsive behavior and other problems. Number 8. You pull on your dog's leash. Your dog can not only read your body language, but also the leash tension levels. When you pull it, you signal that you're tense, nervous, or on alert, causing stress. You shouldn't let your dog drag you around either. If your pet isn't listening to you, stop. As soon as the leash loosens and the dog looks at you, you can continue your walk. Don't forget to take treats with you to encourage your dog's good behavior. A leash that's too short also makes the animal nervous. If you let your dog walk on a long leash, you make it clear that everything is under your control and there's no danger. This way, it'll be easier for you to walk your dog because it won't feel constant tension. Let your dog sniff around. In 2015, an international group of researchers headed by Bertie Nelson studied the role odors play in a dog's life. They concluded that it impacts their behavior and well-being. A walk for a dog isn't just a time when it can relieve itself. It's also an opportunity to get to know the surrounding territory. Many times, dogs pee on things to leave information. Other dogs come by, sniff where the prior dog went, gets the information, and then also pees there. Yeah, it's like Facebook. The first dog leaves a post, and others comment on it. That's why your pet will become upset if you drag it away from trees and curbs all the time. Number 7. You don't take your dog's fear of water seriously. Most dogs love swimming in the open water because it makes them feel free. However, even breeds that love swimming in lakes, lying in puddles, and running through lawn sprinklers might hate taking baths. Dogs don't like the sound of running water or the slippery surface. So if you want to reduce your dog's stress, place a slip-resistant mat in the bottom of the tub Give it lots of treats and compliment it for its good behavior. 6. You hug your dog. It's natural for humans to show affection by wrapping their arms around someone's body. But hey, dogs don't have arms, so their ways of showing love and support are different. Imagine a creature 3 to 10 times your size approaching you and squeezing you. A lot of dogs will take it, especially the traditional family breeds like a golden retriever. But most pooches will feel threatened and uncomfortable if you do so. Dr. Alexandra Horowitz has pointed out the typical signs of a dog feeling uncomfortable during a hug. Ears pinned back, lip licking, yawning, and trying to get away. Number 5. You yell at your dog. Dogs are afraid of loud sounds and can't understand what you want from them. If you're unhappy with your dog's behavior, take a certain pose of your choosing and make an upset facial expression. If your puppy isn't yet trained enough to wait for a walk and leaves puddles on the floor, yelling at it will only make things worse. If you punish your dog physically or yell at it, it won't become better trained. It'll just be afraid of you and sneaky. Chances are, it'll do the same thing when you aren't around. A 2016 study by the Department of Psychology, Brigham Young University, concluded that dogs can always tell when people are angry, and they become more hesitant to do what the same people ask of them. Number 4. You don't play with your dog enough. If you can't find enough time to play with your pooch, be prepared to have it damage a lot of things when you're not home. Your pet needs to release its energy, and if you can't help with this, it'll find its own way. And you won't like it. Playing with your dog is important. Activities like running help develop your dog's physical stamina. And -and hide-and-seek, for example, is good for its intelligence. Rebecca Somerville, animal behavior specialist at the University of Edinburgh, explains that a dog playing by itself isn't a sign that it's happy. It could be trying to show you how bored it is and basically crying for help. Playing together is a great way of bonding and keeping your pooch content. Number 3. You leave your pet alone. Dogs are social animals and they don't like to be by themselves. Of course, you can't spend all your time with your dog, I wish, but you can decrease the level of its anxiety. To do so, spend as much time as possible with it when you're home. Follow a precise schedule. 
the animal should know the time when you leave home and when you come back. Buy different toys so that your dog can entertain itself while you're away. Number 2. You let strangers pet your dog. If a stranger comes up to your dog and tries to pet it saying, ah, what a cutie, the best thing you can do is thank them and politely ask them not to come any closer. Veterinary behaviorist Dr. Ilana Reisner explains that your dog's character or mood can be different, and even the most sociable and kind dog can be reactive. If you let everyone touch your dog, you cause it to be stressed out, and you stop being a leader in your dog's eyes. When I say strangers, I don't mean only humans, but other dogs as well. Some owners just love to push their dogs into doggy get-togethers at parks. Now think about it. Do you personally want to make friends with every human you meet in the street? If your answer is no, then why would your dog's answer be yes? Number 1. You're depressed. If you've noticed that your dog is sad, pay attention to your own state of mind. Your pet feels your mood, and if you feel bad, your dog can become depressed too. Dr. Wilani Sung explains depression isn't contagious, but when you feel low, you pay less attention to your pet, or do it with much less enthusiasm. Your pooch can make your mood better, but you should put in some effort as well. Get yourself together and go for a walk with your dog, or play with it at the park. And you'll do your pooch a lot of good if you quit smoking. Different studies, including one in 2007, of 30 Yorkshire Terriers at the University of Brasilia, have shown that dogs suffer from passive smoking, which can result in serious lung diseases for them. Okay, now it's your turn. How do you comfort your dog when it's obviously upset? Let me know down in the comments.